Hey everyone, Ilios45 here. Um, I'm doing an updated version of my C++ database. Uh, the last version that I did, or the actually my most popular version, the first version, um, it's not very good to be honest. I just did my first year of actual computer science education at uh, um, college. And I did that program whenever I was like 14 years old and I had just learned how to program and I just thought I would just do that, put that out. Um, but now I realize there's a lot better way. We're going to be doing a much more updated version of it. Not, well, not really updated, just better. We're going to be using classes and a whole bunch of uh, more streamlined and better, more like standard ver ways to do it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get, go ahead and get started here. Um, we're going to be creating a class. Um, as you, you can see, we're going to have uh, five uh, different files here we're going to be working with. Um, two for, the, for an employee class that's basically going to hold all the information for each individual employee in the database. And the database class itself, or the, rather the containers is what it's called. It's going to be holding um, like an array of uh, employees. Um, and just the main file is going to run run the entire thing. Um, or is we'll start out making a class for the employee class employee. Um, and for, let's, let's go ahead and just jump put in our public and private. This all can be done also in, with a struct. Just, um, structs and classes are pretty much the same. You know, not a whole lot of differences in, with with them. That's how they operate. All right, in our <coughs> Excuse me. In my pri in our private section, we're going to have the uh, um, all the information that we're going to want for each employee, like their name. Um, I'm putting standard there because I'm not using the namespace standard. I'm just going to put it in front of each string because it's normal uh, convention not to use namespaces in interface files, which is these .h files. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put standard in front of the strings. Um, have an int for the ID number. A, another string for the address of the employee, a double for the salary of the employee, and an int for, let's just say for the, the year that they started at the company. All right, so the employee is going to have each of these. Oh, I might want to put my semicolon there. Now, what all this class really wants to do is you're going to need to have a constructor, which is just employee with braces there, um, which basically that's going to run every single time that the uh, um, class is called. So essentially, if like in your main, if you just put employee like EMP or whatever, it's going to give you a class with a st with the uh, default. Uh, with a, like a like kind of like a default class with like all the initialized variables in it and whatnot, so yeah, like the constructor will just generate that, and we're gonna have an uh, copy constructor, which is it's gonna have all of the um, standard string new name. It's basically going to be like if you have your employee or whatever EMP, and they, then you can put braces and put like Bob, comma, um, ID number one, comma, uh, address one, two, three, main street or whatever. And you can also put five for the years working. It basically allows you to do that. It'll just initialize all those variables to a preset um, number or a phrase or word or whatever. And then you're going to do int new underscore ID comma standard string new underscore address. You can name these whatever you want. You don't need to name them this. It's just like any other variable. Not, not new address. Double new salary. And int new underscore year 
Rogers underscore worked. Just give you that. Now, all right. So now, next, what all the uh, uh, variables need, or what this class needs, is a set of accessors. Now, what accessors do is basically allows uh, an outside function to access the uh, private member variables. Because um, by default, if they're inside of private here, they don't have um, an outside function does not have access to these. So um, basically, what you want to do is standard string ah, string uh, get underscore name. Now all of these can be done uh, in line. There's one line uh, implementation, so we just do them in line here. Return name. So it's just those functions that are just going to return whatever uh, um, whatever variable or whatever object they're linked to. Int new underscore or not new get underscore id underscore number. Man, my typing is being pretty horrid tonight. Uh, Back up there, and uh, so I have a return ID underscore number. There we go. The next one, next one's uh, the address. Make it standard there. String get underscore address. Empty break, empty uh, empty parameters. Return address. So this is kind of tedious here, but I'm just gonna keep going through and finish this up. Double get underscore salary return salary. Last one is int get underscore years underscore worked. There we go. Years worked. All right, return years underscore worked. Okay. Make sure all my semicolons are there. I'm saying one is an errant semicolon. All right, so now lastly, well, not exactly lastly, but for, for this class, the last thing we kind of want to do is create a function for the outputting of an employee information. Output and void input for the input um, into a um, employee's information. So now these are going to have parameters of, for output, OStream, outs, and iStream, ins. It's basically going to uh, allow, like a, for, so basically, like it, in the main, you can just call employee dot output, and with like the certain uh, whether you want it to be C out or F out for a file out or whatever. If you want to output to the screen or to a file, you can just put it into whatever, and it will output it to the screen. Um, yeah, and oops, these need to be passed by reference. Yeah, iStream, iStream, no stream are kind of like general terms used for uh, streams. Um, it can encompass both file streaming and uh, like input output streaming, like with CN or C out or with I, um, OF stream, output file streaming or input file streaming, IF stream. So that will work for that. Now, um, one last thing is we're going to um, overload two uh, operators. Um, I guess if you don't know how to do this, um, you might want to go check out the tutorial for overloading. 
but we're going to be overloading the insertion and extraction operators. So O stream, each one's going to return a uh, a stream operator standard O stream comma employee by reference temp. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that because there's only, only going to be a couple things changed between the insertion and the extraction. This is going to be an iStream. This is going to be switched. So the iStream. So basically what this allows you to do, um, say you have a employee or something named like EMP. What you can do is just do C out EMP. And what it will do is it'll just take the C out right here as the, the as this parameter and the EMP as this parameter and it'll do whatever you want with it. That's what one thing that's cool about overloading operators is you can basically make the operator do whatever you want it to do. Um, which is both good and bad. You can just screw up an operator really bad. So it does something completely weird and something completely wrong. Um, but for right now, that's actually good um, for the entire class. That should be all we need. Oh, one last thing I guess I can show. I have the if not defined. But basically what this is is it's preventing multiple declarations of a class. You know, it's just normal to do employee underscore H then hashtag define employee underscore H then you go down to the bottom and if hashtag so yeah there's a problem with um, using multiple files with a um, project or with a program where um, if the the class is getting called multiple, uh, multiple times and it's getting defined multiple times, you'll a lot of times get a compiler error. So doing this makes sure it tells the compiler that if it was already defined, don't bother trying to define the class again. Um, to just let it go and uh, just skip it. So that's basically what that does. Um, so I'm going to le leave that video with that. It's nearing 13 minutes right now. Um, in the next one, we're going to go on to the imp the implementation of the uh, employee class. I'll show all the different... Uh, basically, what this is going to encompass is just the output input and the overloading of the operator. Not a whole lot. Oh, and the uh, constructor and copy constructor. Um, so, yep, that's about it. Hey, make sure you check out some of the other videos I've made if you want to do that. And uh, check out the next video if you want to see how to do the implementation.